wrong with it. All right, guys, we're back for episode 57 of the SOA podcast. We've got a special guest with us. I'm Bob. Bobby. We've got Coach Clay Bewley Correct. from Astoria Foothills High School, a strength and conditioning coach. We're going to talk a lot about coaches, do's and don'ts, things you've run into, some problems, testing, evaluating. ACLs, we got a lot of things to cover in this new year, so make sure if you're not already subscribed, subscribe, and let's get ready for episode 57. The Strength of America Podcast. All right, we want to talk with the new year kind of starting out. We thought we want to get one of our local coaches has been doing a lot of great things here in the Valley for kids on, on not only performance, but keeping them safe at the same time. So we want to talk about, because we know there's a lot of coaches, we get questions from on what do you do, or some of them feel like they're alone and they've got all these kids and what to do, and uh, they're, they're kind of lost or they're going through a system. There's so many kids, they don't really have a system. It's just try and keep everybody safe in the weight room. So... Uh, with yours, you've got the opportunity that you're actually working with them in blocks during the daytime as yes. well, right? Yes. For the uh, different athletes. How many different athletes are you working with at school? Well, it's kind of funny. It's kind of a fluid number just with our rosters as things change over, kids sure. graduate, new kids coming in, trying new sports. And so it's a little bit fluid. But between our uh, 22, possibly 23 sports coming up here, we might be adding club lacrosse to the school, and we are adding men's volleyball uh, this spring. It's going to be the first year of that. Great. So we have 22 official possibly 23 if lacrosse ends up coming up and that brings us to about 450 ish athletes actually at the school so it's quite a number and so we get a good amount of those athletes during the day we get a good amount of those athletes after the day and we also sprinkle that in with uh, students who aren't involved in sports who are in our uh, strength and conditioning program during the day so when you add all that in you know we might have anywhere from five six hundred kids out of the school population which is uh, right now currently about 1150 give yeah. or take transfers in cancer now so uh we're one of the smaller 4a schools in the program uh in the 4a conference we're one of the smaller ones but i mean we're we're dealing with i think we're five six hundred kids it's a lot of kids like we know it's a lot of kids it's a lot of how long have you been there at school this is my third year um just a little kind of background about me and my journey started up at nau as an undergrad student assistant working with coach cody hodgson who's actually now at ottawa university uh over there on the west side i was there for about three years working uh working starting out from the very bottom set up shut up go over there ask questions when it's all done slowly yeah. working my way into coaching sure. coming up through there uh fantastic job with that with that program then after that went over to jacksonville university uh division one double a in florida worked with all their sports over there and got mentored under coach marcy hoppa and coach andrew bates after that then went to angelo state which is a small d2 school in san angelo texas you guys never heard of angelo state it's all good it's a small school but had a tremendous opportunity there under Chad Herring. He was their head strength coach at the time. That's where I did my grad assistant work. Worked with baseball, volleyball, soccer, and uh, oh my gosh, the coach is going to kill me. Baseball, volleyball, soccer, and yep, that's about it. And then from there, we, uh, and then from there, uh, went over to UNLV, was over at UNLV for a bit, working with their football team, Good. working with Coach Keith Belton, who's now over at Kansas. And uh, after a season where it didn't quite go to our expectations, had to go find another job somewhere. Jeez. And yeah. after a grueling search, got hired on by Australia Foothills and made the transition over to high school strength and conditioning and haven't quite looked back. That's so great. That's, that's the past 10 years of my life in a nutshell. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's a, that's a lot of moving around. It so. was. Thank goodness I got a great wife and a supportive family who... Yeah got me through that and you know the coaches wives are the real mvps because yeah. yeah. it's not uncommon for to be at five schools in five years and you got to move all around so they're the real mvps so. that's crazy oh, so, so do you do you, how, how do you what do you think about college versus high school what do you like uh what, what, well the thing cool. i love about high school is you get the kids at a much more malleable state yeah. much more impressionable state you got them at 14 to 18 and you, you can make such a tremendous impact yes. on their lives for good, you can teach them how to work, you can teach them what it's like to be dedicated, you can teach them what it's like to have high character. When you get them in college, not that you can't have that, but they've kind of found out who they are at 18, 19, 20, 21, yes, versus right. those real impact times. And at the high school level, I also get to establish good movement patterns and establish good behavior patterns before they have a chance of learning bad 
patterns. <laughs> and so lots of times it happened when I was at college is I would get these red shirts of these new freshmen who has obviously never been through a program and well, this is what my high school did and I cleaned 300 pounds. Well, guess what? That 300 pound clean look like yep. garbage. So let's yep. go ahead and take that down. Let's have you relearn what you're doing and let's build you from the ground up again. Well, now I get to build up from the ground up and I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about the bad habits they learned beforehand. Yeah. Just start and the foundation and give them, teach them how to squat, how absolutely. to move without any, that's man, good. If, man, once you learn how to hinge, once you learn how to squat, stabilize on one leg, life just becomes a whole lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of falls <laughs> into place. It is, and it's kind of funny. And, and also one thing I love about the high school is you get to see the growth in these young men and young ladies where they come in as 14 year old kids and they're leaving as young adults. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you got to play a pretty big part in that, not just in the physical development, but the emotional, the the maturity, the spiritual development, whatever whatever your aim is, you you get to have an impact on that. Yeah. And then you know it's it's always fun when you get a call, you know, uh, six months to a year afterwards. Hey, yeah. coach, just did this. Just want to say thanks for, for all you did. And yeah. when you got here without you, it's like, well, I was just a piece of the puzzle. You were you're the yeah. one who did the work. You're the one who lifted. I didn't lift a dang thing. Yeah. <laughs> you're the yeah. one who actually did the work. So you get yeah. credit. It's great. And then you see, and we Bobby's are the same thing. We do yeah. too. The kids get done with high school and they come back from break after their first mm -hmm. semester of college or something in too. And then to find out, the kids are realizing how much they learned with you. Because yeah, at the yeah. college level, even a lot of times, the kids are like, man, these kids don't know how to squat. Oh, they don't, they don't know how to do, do anything. And, yeah. you know, so they're, they really understand the foundation. They just think that's standard <laughs> when they get out in another school. It's like, holy cow, what's, <laughs> well, what's going uh, on? It's so, crazy even college. Yeah, that's, oh, that's awesome. A great experience I actually had just yesterday. I had one of my alums who he's uh, playing over at Kansas. He's pitching over there. Okay. And I was asking him about their strength and conditioning program, stuff he's doing with their baseball team. And he's like, it's pretty much what we did. The only difference is they just have nicer stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Kansas money. That's, that's, that's Power funny. 5 Conference money. I don't yeah. quite have that here. He talked about, you know, the DEXA scans they do and the BOD pods and some of the, yeah. and some of the real great sports science stuff. Yeah. But when you actually show me the lifts and the movements they do, he's like, it's like, I already knew how to split squat when I got there. And I already knew how to deadlift properly. And I already yeah. knew how to front squat. And I already knew how to, and how to clean a little bit. And so it was actually... Pretty cool hearing that from him. He's like, yeah. it was nice. He didn't have to spend that much time with me. He got to make other people's lives miserable, and I just yep. got to do my stuff. I was like, yeah. well, glad I could help, man. That's <laughs> glad I could help, Ryan. Foundation. Glad that's, I could help, Ryan. That's perfect. <laughs> what were some when you first came, went into the school over there, at, straight at the high school, from that first year to the third year now, uh, pretty much kind of the same, or did you see a lot of shock and change? Uh, a lot of a lot of shock system? when I first came in, because before I came in, it was very much coaches ran it and uh, PE teachers ran it. And not that they weren't doing a bad job, it just wasn't quite unified and they didn't have somebody with the expertise. Much like if I came in, I tried to run a basketball practice or if I tried to run a football sure. practice, I probably wouldn't run a, a great one because that's not my background, that's not right. my expertise. Yeah. And so nothing against the coaches that were there beforehand, it's just, that's just not what they knew. That wasn't what they spent. You know, years getting a bachelor's and yeah, years sure. getting a master's and studying Won't for send a, me in a math class to teach us for sure. Exactly. <laughs> hey, send, hey, you put me in an art class and I'll, we're, we're going to learn how to draw stick some really figures. good stick figures. Yeah. It was more putting the right person in the right spot. So, yeah. not taking anything away from what they're doing, but sure. they just got the right person in the right spot. Yeah. But uh, the very first workout when I got there, it was, you know, I had this beautiful eight week summer program, yeah. similar stuff to what I did at the past college. I was like, all right, we're going to get this, we're going to get started. And then we got there and we did it and it was not great. <laughs> and so I took yeah. that eight week program and threw it in the garbage and simplified it yeah. into a much simpler and just, and I was like, I got to leave French contrast at the, at the door. I got to leave triphasic training at the door. I got to yeah. leave some of these other training protocols at the door. And we're just going to hammer the basics. We're going to squat. We're going to hinge. We're going to press. We're going to pull. Yeah. We're just going to keep on doing that until we get pretty good. Yeah. And the main thing, and this is what I told all the coaches when I first came in, is don't judge me on the numbers after year one, judge me on the culture and the expectations. You can judge me on the numbers year two and year three. Yep. And we got some we got some good kids who can lift some good weight, uh, maybe not humongous totals, but when you compare it to body weight ratios, they're doing pretty good. Yeah. And so there was a lot of that, and so the culture has really changed. And, and kids know when they walk in, they're not there to hang out. They're not there yeah. to play around. They're there to work. Now, if you work, we're going to have a great time. I'm going to put the music you like on. We're going we're gonna to put in that good work, but you are there to work. There's, yep. That's the standard. The standard is you doing your best. If you bring out your best, you can go somewhere else, and I won't shed a tear for you. Yep. And so they know that, and that definitely kind of 
oh, yeah. definitely kind of shocked some individuals uh, when I first got there. But, and fortunately our athletic director did a great job of pulling me aside and, and uh, told me like, hey, you're a passionate guy. They're not used to that. You gotta yep. keep the passion, but funnel it in. And, you know, you know don't, don't be quite as in your face, be energetic, be, be passionate, but don't, uh, but don't scare our kids. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I was very gracious for that because uh, the, I know the, the strength coach stereotype of on the sidelines going nuts, that's me. I, that's me. Sure. It's not uncommon at Australia Foothills if you've been in a football game to see Coach Clay hop in the stands and hype up the crowd and then hop the fence and get back to the sidelines on a big play. That's not uncommon. It's yeah. actually become yeah, more cool. of a thing. Yeah. Well, and that's uh, a learning process. I, you know, I think and, and Bobby went through the process too. You're working through and you're coaching, you're, you're, you're actually an athlete in high school, you're an athlete in college, you're doing your work and you come back and you're coaching now and you, you're around a whole different group. Oh yeah. That they don't have that same, same work ethic or the same drive. Or the same background. Or you gotta, how do you inspire this yeah. group to come in and do that and those to get them set up and, uh, and you, you gotta be careful because you don't want to just scare them all off either. From exactly. It, but or you got a kid who's trying good. athletics for the first time and yeah. they're 14, they've never done before. And all yeah. of a sudden there's this crazy guy in the weight room yeah. who's yeah. yelling yeah. and screaming. <laughs> and I've made that mistake yeah. many times yeah. where I have scared a kid off and it's taken me a while to get that kid been back. There. Yeah, we've all yeah. been there. <laughs> And that's something that I've really worked on and an analogy I've kind of thought of is, you know, that coaching fire, it's kind of like a fire inside your house. Yeah. That that fire inside your house can heat the whole house or it can burn it down. It's yeah. how well are you actually utilizing that heat. That's great. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, there have been times where I've burned down the house, but, yeah. Yeah. you know, fortunately with patience and, you know, with okay. mentorship from other coaches, I've learned how to channel that passion and, and help to learn to inspire kids instead of being like, Who's this guy? Yeah, well, it's, it's been a bit of a mix, but I think at the same time we've we've got a lot that are too cautious. Yeah, that we don't get out on what we need to. So you've got to find yeah. that happy medium. But like really I said, do. I would rather my high school kids that I've worked with in the past. We've told all of them. I would rather you guys break down and have problems with the stress here while you have your support system. Oh yeah. Rather than in that dorm room in college all by yourself and you don't know how to deal with stress and adversity or how to push yourself and expectations. You know, let's let's have that happen here. I'd rather you fail and have a problem with me where you've got that support system to help you get through it. Being sitting on that dorm room all by yourself and you're experiencing tough. it for the first time is yeah, not exposed. good to do. So that's awesome. And that's where developing personal relationships with your athletes come into play. And I got a lot of kids. Have I developed a personal relationship with all of them? No, I haven't, okay. but I'm trying every day yep. to develop yeah. more of them. Yep. And so that way I know that, you know, athlete A, I can really get in their grill. I can really, I can really get in their face and they're going to respond well. Well, athlete B, that's not going to work out so well. I got to yep. figure out how to get into there and find their why. And I got to figure out what makes them tick. And I haven't quite done that with all my athletes, but every day I try to do it a little bit more. Yeah, and, and one thing that I've found that really helps to develop that personal relationship is just learning a name quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, sure. and sometimes I don't know, I don't know over at Chandler's, we got a lot of Aiden's, Braden's, Dalen's. We got a lot of, we got a lot of those names. So sometimes it gets a little confusing of, or yeah. we also have a lot of Jacobs and it seems like we have 27 Jacobs in my <laughs> okay, program. Right. <laughs> yes. And so just learning the kid's name and remembering something about him, even it's just yeah. as simple as, Hey, you like this one artist. Hey, what song do you like? Oh, I like yeah. it by this guy. Hey, enjoy it enjoy the next three minutes of the lift listening to the song yeah. like even just little things like that have to break down barriers yeah. because somebody will respond a lot well when they have that relationship there yeah. for i mean think of any class you hated in high school or in college where the yeah. professor was a jerk and you know got on and you're just like whatever dude i don't care yeah but when you have that relationship and you mutually respect and trust that person yeah. and then when they challenge you and they they try to get you better you're more than likely going to respond in the way to, yeah, to help you improve. Well, those kids know they've got you know you've got a lot of kids that uh, figure out who they are, what's going on. Yeah. They're a number for a lot of people. Yeah. So they got somebody that knows their name and something about them and pulls them into it. They they, they want to do whatever they can for you and pull yeah. into it. So yeah, that's do the work. And that's one thing I try to really establish with my classes at after school that when you come in, I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest supporter. But don't get it twisted. I am not your friend. I'm here yeah. to make you better. And so yeah. we have that standard and. And yeah. honestly, the vast majority of kids, because I held everybody to the same standard, they do a really good job. I like that structure, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Do a really, they do a really good job. And really, we just yeah. have two standards in the weight room. Do nothing to take away from your own success and do nothing to take away from the success of others. Everything else kind of falls into that range. And then we have our safety rules, which, you yeah. know, those, you, can't, you gotta keep those a little, make sure the, make sure the spotter arms are set up, make sure, safe, yeah, you know. keeping everybody safe. That's more, that's more, you know, visually and 
And you got to make sure those are crossed. But those two things do nothing to take away from your success, do nothing to take away from somebody else's success. It kind of covers everything. Yeah. I think that's what's been fun of the high school. I didn't work at a college, but intern, student assisted, and uh, stuff like that. But it, uh, yeah, there, ain't no, there ain't much difference from <laughs> working and doing that. It's yeah, still work. Yeah. And it was uh, when I moved down to the prep school, I had a similar where came in, had this great idea and plan, and basically to throw it away just because oh, sure, yeah. kids they are they completely ready. different. What, what you have is completely different at your resources. and uh, But the relationships are just so much. It's so much more fun, oh, yeah. uh, the impact you can have. And I think oh, that's yeah. what I really enjoy about high school. I don't know that I could ever look to doing anything else. I don't know. It's just, yeah. it's fun when they're at that age and the impact you can make. Uh, so I, I get you see huge differences through that time frame when they come in. Like I said, yeah. at 14 years old, they're, they're a young pup. Bambies, yeah. Awkward, <laughs> things moving around and get yeah. them to see how they develop and move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's great. How about uh, nutrition or helping these kids learn how to eat? Or well, you guys touch or get to do Well, we, we, we touch on that in class. Uh, okay. One thing I've tried to get out is I've actually talked about maybe trying to get a nutrition class started or a health class started. There's a lot of steps to get that put in sure. at the school at the school which you know that'd be great if we could get that in the future that's kind of one of those things on the back burners yeah. Yeah. but just giving nutritional handouts in class one thing and very very rarely we do have athletes who need to lose weight of course but the vast majority of kids in our athletic program are kids that need to gain weight right yeah. uh, we have I, I joke around that we got a surplus of uh, underweight athletes and so <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants and so we have a surplus so we're trying to we're trying to get rid of that surplus sure. and so what I've implemented is just something very simple called the rule of three three meals a day three snacks a day don't go longer than three hours without eating if you're hungry yeah. you're not eating enough and I uh, got that one from one of my old mentors, Coach Chad Herring. So a little shout out, Chad, when, when I tell you about this. So got it from him, and it's been, and it's been really good. And what's really funny is uh, it's really caught on. So like in class, there are times when a kid's like, oh, Coach, why am I not getting any bigger? And a kid will yell, because you're not following the rule of three. <laughs> and, and so that kind of comes. And, and, uh, and sometimes what I'll do, I've done this in the past. haven't done it as much recently, something I can get back to was basically going through the lunch line with kids and saying, <laughs> hey, you know, stay away, stay away from this. These are the good lunches, get this. Yep. Make sure it has protein in it, make sure it has carbohydrates. And the, and the secret, especially with public schools, for getting a little bit extra protein, a little extra nutrition. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, milks are free at the school. It's part of the free, okay. free, uh, free government subsidized breakfast. Milk is considered a breakfast food, so schools get uh, milks for free. Uh -huh. And so they can, and so they can take a milk anytime they want, That's great. and especially for kids who are trying to gain weight. I was, I always tell them take two or three. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anytime yeah. you can get a lunch, anytime you can get milk, take two. Yeah. Anytime you can, they, anytime you can take two, take three. Did they go <laughs> California route and tell them no chocolate milk? Uh, no. yes. But you oh, know man. what? But you know what? <laughs> if <laughs> and they're the little, the little eight ounce cartons. Ounce, yeah. yeah, but at the same time. You know, two percent white milk. You're still going to get all the same proteins. May not get oh, enough yeah. sugars, but you know that's what? Yeah. But you know what? I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee you, they're going to eat some candy, and that's that that yeah. sucrose and dextrose is going to be yeah. the same anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's just one of the things that California drove me nuts when they dropped all that. But we're not going to do that. They took out the chocolate milk, mm -hmm. and then they had apple juice. They substitute. Yeah, hey, sugar, like, sugar, yeah, 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 sugar, 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 protein. Yeah, just sugar, no just sugar, no protein. Brilliant, uh, brilliant idea. Hey, you, hey, you know that's where we got that's where I got them in charge, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but just trying to get them to eat a little bit more and yeah. and uh, what I'll do a lots of times is is in class when it's, when it comes time to end is like, all right, who ate breakfast today? Who didn't eat breakfast today? Yep. All right, you guys already lost today because you didn't eat. Yep. And then just let them know everything like and I'll and I'll ask a kid like, hey, when do you eat dinner? Oh, I eat dinner at seven. It's like, well, it's ten thirty in the morning, so. You know, Nothing seven to day. seven, 12 hours, plus another hour and a half, you're looking at 15 and a half hours without eating. Congrats, you've almost went 24 hours without ingesting something. No wonder why you're hungry yeah. and you're small. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm a big, I really love Coach Allen Bishop over at, uh, over at University of Houston. I follow a lot of his stuff on social media. And he has a phrase that I love. It's, it's hard to look like a grown man if you don't eat like one. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so I, I take a picture of a lot of what I cook and so like yesterday I cooked up some flank steak with some sweet potatoes, some regular potatoes and uh, put a little provolone cheese on top of the yeah. steak and grilled onions just because it, you know, it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I like to take pictures of that and, or like when I cook a quick breakfast of like four or five scrambled eggs with, with some turkey and some cheese on there and, yeah. and I'll also put a time lapse of, you know, it took me five minutes to make this. You do have time. Sure. Yeah. 
And you know, even if you're, you're not doing that, just at least get something. One awareness. thing I told one thing yeah. I told a kid is like, hey, if you got time to grab one chewy bar for breakfast, you got time to grab four. Oh yeah, <laughs> just, just yeah. eat it on the bus. Just at least get something. Get, yeah. And yeah. that's where we find most of our athletes just don't get enough. They don't. Calories. They don't eat. Our, our female period. athletes are worried about gaining weight. They don't want to do this, so they eat way too few. And the oh, yeah. parents say, "Well, we're concerned because we have all of our kids fill out a fuel chart. Yeah, we have them do it one day. You know, that's what your typical day is, mm -hmm. so that we can then." You know, help 24 them understand hour, what 24 hour food doing, log, how they're doing, getting yeah. all that stuff set. We let them know how much protein they're getting, how much water, hydrating, sleep, everything's on that chart. Uh, and sometimes we'll get parents, well, we don't want to worry about calories and pull it. I said, well, you have to, you've got to understand what you're taking in. Yeah. Is it too much or not? And telling them mostly, especially our female athletes, they're not getting enough calories. No, so, not you know, we've got to be aware of that. And you don't know that until you go through and fill that out. Mm -hmm. And as we go through our summer program, where they're, the kids on, Monday are, are dragging, and on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're doing great. Mm -hmm. It's not they've gotten in shape in three days. If it's over feel. that weekend off, they're not eating right, they're, they're sleeping late, they're, they're doing all kinds of you know Coke and sodas and eating mm -hmm. twice a day because they s slept till noon, and now Monday rolls around, they've got nothing in, and they can keep up with it. So eating regular and keeping it up, they get aware of it and they start really making a difference. But and then they try to supplement that lack of sleep with highly caffeinated drinks, the energy oh, drinks yeah. so you can pick up at any single uh that you could pick up at any single, you know, gas station, or they drive through Starbucks and Dutch Bros and get, you know, <laughs> six hundred calorie drinks that are just nothing but sugar. Yeah. And so they're cranked up and then thirty minutes later they crash and they're down for a couple yeah. hours because their body just plummeted with all the insulin. So that's where that, that consistency makes oh, yeah. such a difference in going into it. Really it really so, does. The coaches, you're not alone out there. Oh, hey, so there's... hopefully picking up some great tips on how to do that. But I think the biggest is just making them aware often. Yeah. It's not just a handout and that's it and they go back to it. Just but you're eat. talking each day. Each class we'd say, okay, who if we're doing an afternoon or evening, how many of you have already had your three meals today or what's happening, where you're at mm -hmm. your point. And we know who it is, especially as we get through the workouts, because we're seeing who's dragging. And I'll ask them once they're down or they're sitting down having to take a break or they're on their back, how many meals do you have? In front of everybody, and not to yeah. embarrass them, but to say, look, just to, just everybody else realizing, know. crap, I'm eating, I'm doing fine, I'm, I can keep up with the workout, mm -hmm. that's great. I'm realizing I'm not, so I need to. So it's awareness that they all have to see it, and we're visual people, and, and just talking about it's not enough. So they get to feel it, and they, they usually once they get sick or something bad happens, oh, yeah. and they, they catch on and they're right on track yeah. after that. I had, a, yeah. I had a young man who was getting pretty lightheaded in a lift uh, not too long ago. It was an after-school lift, and and I had to sit him down, told the other coach, hey, you're gonna take over, let me make sure that this young man's okay. Sat him down, asked him like, he's like, oh, I'm so lightheaded. like, well, what'd you have for breakfast? Oh, I didn't have any. What'd you have for lunch? I had an apple. Like, <laughs> and, and we're at we're at we're at, we're, we're at 3:40 in the day right now. Like yeah. this, is, the day has already gone on. Like Got nothing in the tank. Yeah, yeah he nothing, literally nothing in the tank. His body was his Jeez. body was breaking down on him, and so that's when it was a great. That's when it was like okay time out this workout stop we got to talk about nutrition right now because we got a yeah. kid who's about ready to pass out because he's literally eaten an apple in 24 hours yeah and so and there and i'm sure you've had a similar experiences like that where kids dying where they haven't eaten i'm sure you've had plenty of experience like that <laughs> and so you know the, the nutrition is one thing and, and everybody thinks that the training is the hard part oh the training's hard. the training is the easy part yeah <laughs> the hard part is all the stuff you do the other 22 hours a day are you getting enough sleep are you turning your phone off so the blue light isn't keeping you up yeah. are you eating are you making sure you're making the correct choices on a saturday night uh i don't know about you your school we have those conversations all the time yeah about don't let the short-term pleasures take away from your long-term goals not telling you not to have fun but i am telling you to be safe and all it takes is one mistake yeah. and a yeah. school will say nope see ya yeah especially when it's between you Social and five guys crazy. oh yes there's yeah we i've had plenty of i call them one-sided conversations because we're gonna have a conversation but i'm the only one gonna be talking right <laughs> yeah. now yeah. I call them one-sided conversations i've had plenty of one-sided conversations about this stuff about making sure you do the correct things in your life to be able to give you that opportunity at the next level yeah because so few kids get out that opportunity once you get that opportunity don't ruin it do to the behaviors outside of the weight room the weight room is yeah. easy yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. all the stuff outside the weight room that's the tough part yeah though.
How about when you're, you've got kids starting out, you know, in the first year, evaluating those athletes and figuring out what they need? Or do you have a process of certain tests that they do to see, or is it basic, just fundamental movements? Basically, basically adjust? fundamental movements. We started integrating more tests. Uh, I started doing tests when I first got there and kind of got away from it because I was constantly having so many kids coming it's in. Tough. It was tough to constantly, constantly test. And so it's that's where- time we, consuming for yeah, one it was, person. It was, really, just, it was really tough. And that's yeah. where I just kind of went into just standards using the warm up to really integrate proper movement patterns. Yeah. Once you, and one thing I'm actually gonna try to be putting in is, is more of a, of more of a plant, not a, is more of a, a strength standard that once you can be able to perform a goblet squat with this much weight for this many reps, you can graduate to a front squat once you're able to graduate from the front squat to the back squat. So having a little bit more set standards with that. Yeah. Well, in the past it's been, all right, that looks pretty good. You can you can progress. Yeah. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Let's take that back. Yeah. And just me constantly on the floor and just constantly evaluating, evaluating, evaluating. Yeah. And and uh, with with all the sports we have, I'd say probably ninety percent of the movements we do are shared between all those sports. We get a little bit of differentiation, not not specialization, but the changes that other ten percent is mostly on you know what part of the season are we in, uh, training age, things like that. You know, or if a kid like, for example, you know, baseball and overhead movements is a is a big one that a lot of people get scared of. <laughs> and uh, you know, taking taking my pitcher who just who just threw, you know, instead of, you know, instead of doing this dumbbell bench press, I'm gonna have you do a weight to push up instead. So just through, oh, okay, and just making those slight changes. That's where the 10%, but the other 90%, everybody's doing a form of squat. Everybody's doing a hinge. Everybody's doing pulls from the ground. Everybody's doing presses. Everybody's doing pulls. Everybody's doing weighty carries. Everybody's doing anti-rotation work. Everybody's doing single leg work. Perfect. And that nice holistic training has really done a pretty good job at reducing our likelihood of injuries. Yeah. And I know that's something we want to get into. And one, one kind of thing, I. It's a buzzword. The injury prevention is a buzzword. Mm -hmm. I've never been a big fan of that because sure. you're never going to 100% prevent no. an injury. Even the best athletes, you know, the guys in the NFL, Stuff the guys happens. in the belt, it's going to happen. It's chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's also important that we differentiate how these injuries are happening. Mm -hmm. Are they the non-contact injuries or are they contact injuries? Yep. You know, even the biggest, strongest guys are going to, if they get hit the right way, are going to get hurt. A beautiful example that I don't know if you guys remember a couple years ago uh, when Gronkowski hurt his knee playing against the Browns. He went out He went out for an out route, outstretched for a ball. TJ wore the safety, came over and put that helmet right on the outside of the yeah. knee. Yeah. And TJ's a bit, yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry, even if you put a tank on, on a railroad track and that tank gets hit by a train, yeah, it might a still be, it's a tank, but it's still gonna take some damage. Like yeah. even the biggest, strongest guys, if you get hit hard enough, you're gonna break. Yeah. And so that's one thing to take into light take into consideration is how these things are happening yes if you get hit hard enough the right way no amount of training no amount of sleep and no amount right. of nutrition is going to prevent that no but we can really reduce the likelihood of these really devastating non-contact injuries yes and yeah. and i took a look at your guys's program and i loved how you guys called it you know applying the brakes or pumping the brakes yep. yeah. because i've very rarely seen an injury happen on an acceleration or a jump it's usually Correct. always on the deceleration or it's usually always on on the landing of something yeah. is when it happens yep. and you know the best way to reduce the likelihood of that injury is the holistic training increasing unilateral strength increasing bilateral strength and most importantly yep. learning how to move and yep. just learning how just to absorb training. force yeah and yeah. just solid training yeah when you well, do that really, it really helps so much misinformation about those things and that's one of the great topics on the whole thing is just that yeah, the injury prevention, you know, that's why you can say that, but yeah. also like we put our, our stuff together, it's looking for those words that people yeah, search it's, for. Yeah, it's the buzzword. You put it in, but you also it's make sure word. that you're explaining what's happening and why, yeah. and you can't prevent everything. You can't. But at the same time, we've got a lot of so many unnecessary, uh, so many oh, unnecessary yeah. injuries oh, that are happening. Well, you know, we said there's you know, 250,000 ACLs and 70% of them are non-contact, you know, yeah, so that's, issue. that's a huge problem, huge. you know, that, that we're not doing it. And that's where I think so much the foundation and the th things that you're doing, uh, things that Bobby's doing, the stuff going out for coaches is to help them understand there's a foundational thing that we should look at. And all of it on our end has been, you should set your program up on trying to keep these athletes healthy. Yeah. That's your primary concern as a strength and conditioning coach. It should be um, that we're trying to figure out evaluation, how they move, how they land, let's keep them healthy out there. And you have to teach them how to eat, how to sleep, it's not just pumping weights. No. We want to get stronger, we do it. It doesn't mean it's a soft program, 
but it means is you're you're considering the whole athlete and what they need to do. Like you talk to them about weekend choices and what they do. That's keeping them healthy. That's becoming a better person, a better athlete. That's our job is to really keep them healthy. And you can do that. Yes. But too many focus on just the weight room. We're good enough, and that's we hopefully now know long enough. I know my 35 years of doing this from my Nebraska time <laughs> here is that it used to be. You get in the weight room and that's great because there were a lot of schools 35 years ago that weren't even doing the weight room oh, not much at all. at all. So you have an advantage. Well, the problem is you've got bigger, faster, stronger athletes that aren't pliable, can't move. You're not working deceleration. You've got a greater risk of hurting that athlete than that skinny kid that's just out there running because he doesn't produce enough power or anything when he changes direction. So you've got to work that in. And to only work one plane of it, you're not doing your job as a coach. So we really appreciate all the stuff that you're doing and seeing no, the stuff background. And, you know, I'm glad you like the ACL program. Uh, I really do. Like, you know, I really it's do. about the breaks and keeping these kids healthy because uh, all the more of us doing things to help keep these kids healthy and, and safe and on the field and having a good time and doing what they want to do and is uh, we're doing our job. So and really not, appreciate all and that. Not, and not only, you know, the, the, the sports side of things, but when you also look at the data, times of high academic stress are oh, usually yeah. a likelihood of injuries, high personal stress, things like that. And also that going back to developing the relationships, figuring out like, okay, you know, for the longest time, I don't know, but I know especially when I was coming up, you know, you maxed on finals week. Well, now that we're looking at, you know, yeah. high academic stress is a very high likelihood of injury during that time. Well, yeah. that's really dumb to put them under the most amount of stress when they're already at the greatest likelihood, that's not really the smartest. Yeah. And so adjusting your testing periods or how you test, uh, figuring out, you know, uh, you know, we've had situations in the past where, you know, kids are kind of bumping around from house to house because the family sure. background is not the best sure. and they're under a lot of stress and they're not getting a ton of sleep uh, or kids having to work jobs to help keep the lights on for their parents. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. I, had, I had one young man who, uh, was in one of the classes and and he was he was working not just to help out himself but help out his family and to help save up for college and so he was working 30 hours a week on top of playing his sport full time Jeez. and yeah, wow, incre yeah incredible young man incredible yeah. young man but he came up and he's like coach i got off work at three o'clock this morning and it and this is our 7 30 class you know uh i don't know if i can go today i was like yeah here you go in the locker room and go sleep, man. Yeah, <laughs> go yeah, sleep. I don't. I don't care. Thing for, yeah. I don't care. Like what? Like these weights are not going to help you right now. And this is a kid who he weighed 150 pounds and he was close to a 400 pound squat. Like just, yeah, just a workhorse. Oh, he was a workhorse. Yeah. But wow. what's going to make this kid better right now? Him going Sweet. squatting more? No, it's not what's going to help. No. And he needs to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. He's under a lot of stress. Yeah. And uh, and so just figuring out what the kids need in that particular. Now that doesn't mean that every kid's gonna get a nap time in school, <laughs> don't get it twisted, especially <laughs> administrators who might be watching this. That doesn't happen very often, that was a one, that was a one time thing. So yeah. don't get too concerned about that. But just figuring out what does this yeah. kid need right now? And yeah. you know, the vast majority of the time, what they need is the workout, what they need is the training session, what they need yeah. is, the, is the plyometric deceleration, uh, speed agility quickness training session that you have programmed. But sometimes you know, they just need something else or sometimes that kid just needs somebody to talk to for 15 yeah. minutes because yeah. they got in a big fight with somebody or they got in a big fight with their dad and now they're having to sleep at yeah. their friend's house for a week because so some of them, so they, just, they just need that. Yeah. And when those stresses go down, it seems like it's unrelated, but everything works together. Yeah. Everything's holistic. And so when those stresses go down, the injury, the likelihood of injury goes down as well. Yeah. And so there's so many different facets of things. Yeah. And then you That's also part get- part of that trust. Trust thing you talked oh, about with the athletes. Huge. Learning, you know, learning their names, learning something about them, what they're doing. They know you care about them enough to find that out. They're willing mm -hmm. to tell you what really is going on. Absolutely. Uh, and that just makes it better all the way around. And, and you know the kids that are, that are making up a story and not. Oh, you yeah. know those yeah. kids are what's happening. Yeah. And, and we've, we've all had them and you adjust and you help it, but the other kids, that's what they've yeah. got to do. So. Uh, I think that's fantastic. How, Coach, how do people follow and find out more about what you're doing? Over uh, so I, a, a lot of it's social media. I post a lot, especially on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, okay. Instagram handle Coach underscore Clay Bewley, B-E-W-L-E-Y. Uh, Instagram's the same handle, Coach underscore Clay Bewley. Post a lot on that. Uh, uh, speak occasionally at clinics. We're going to be having an NHSSCA clinic. Uh, in 2020, hopefully at Campbell Verde High, I gotta get a hold nice. of. Nice. I gotta nice. get a hold. I gotta get a hold of our uh, our our state director uh, Steve Schween, who's down at Seneca High down in Tucson. He has more information about that. Uh, and so there's there's 
Um, so I, anytime I do speak or anytime yeah. I do uh, give presentations and stuff like that, I'm usually, I usually, I usually post it through social media. Okay. That way people can know about it or we do it through organizations. Good. But uh, any, well, anybody- Well, High School's you know, Strength and Condition, that's a great organization and stuff too, so we'll make sure we have links on that. Too. Oh, we'll absolutely, sure and, that, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, NHSSCA. Yeah. Uh, well, partially, one, I love everything they're doing, but on their Facebook page is how somebody, somebody posted the opening at the high school that I'm at through their Facebook page, so I found out the job that I'm at through yeah. them. And so that was, awesome. that was such a huge blessing in my life and because uh, it was it was a long and arduous search uh, once my time at UNLV came to a close of trying to find a place where I could earn a living and support my family and yeah, yeah. and uh, That's somebody a great group. we follow the group oh, so I'm part of it and they, they I've never met a more open group of just helping where egos are so little yeah. where you know the 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 coach of the year will talk to somebody who's just getting into it to try to help out that person it's it's yeah. really something pretty incredible Good environment yeah. it is it's it's pretty rare. Not every organization is like no. that. No. Well, that's great. Well, we'll put all the links on for, for Clay stuff yeah. going on and the, the Strength and Nutrition Association and all that stuff as well. So we get it put together so you guys can find out more information on that. Really appreciate you coming on. Anytime. Coming Thank you so much. Right? Thank you so much it. for yeah. having me. Yeah. And, you know, any questions, comments, then I'll make sure you put those onto it as well. Follow us through there and uh, we'll look forward to the next episode. But keep pumping on the new year and uh, keep those kids healthy. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. See ya.